agree with the counterparts here. Um, those are down on paper and they say these are the, the outlines to the operation of the project. Because for us as an institution, I mean this is it might be a relatively small project, but socially it's quite a risky project, and so we need to set some lines to, to define the relationship a bit. Um, so those are the ones that apply in this particular scenario. The financial model, um, I'm, and maybe this comes from my profession, I'm not a fan of any kind of model. I, I quite like guidelines, I quite like methodologies, and I quite like key principles, but I don't like straight models because you might experience it. No, I, think, I think it's not a model, it's just a financial yeah. 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 yeah, and and we are looking at, at a model in, in that sense that could be useful for, for other people to be able to run their numbers and that kind of thing. But, but it certainly won't be one that defines any of the inputs or the outputs. Because the, the mix of funding, even if you take another project within Medellin, it's going to be a totally different, different set of funding options. This one has much more potential for public money because of the character of the area and the priority it has for the current mayoral regime. You go to another area, you can get a total of your, uh, In the case of Wombo, why was the city doing it? What was their objective? And he said in that case it was mainly about tenure security. Now, you gave us rather a lot of lines. Uh, you said, well, we're doing land readjustment because we want to increase the supply of service lands. And we want to reshape the neighborhood. We want to maintain the population to improve social capital and governance. And then later on, towards the end, you said we'll judge our success by inclusive outcomes in terms of rights, the needs of the community, and justice. Is it fair? So I'm kind of curious about that. That's a lot of things to do with one project. Um, how are you establishing? Well, there are different levels. Right. But how are you going to measure it? How will you know if you succeeded? How will you know if you've increased the amount of serviceable land? How will you know if you've got a just outcome? How will you know if you've reshaped the neighborhood? What well, look, some, some of those relate to why the tool of land readjustment, not why the project. Um, I mean, there, there is a mix of, of the way the wise operate. Um, the inclusion. The, the rights needs aspect is how we can, how we would assess. I mean, it's a working hypothesis that, that may develop, but it's a working hypothesis on how we would assess whether we have an inclusive outcome. But we, the key issue will be the balance between the community needs and the city needs. And if we can get an effective balance between those two, then I would count it within a sustainable framework, financially, at an individual and the city level. If we can get an effective balance between the city and the community needs with some level of sustainability, then I would count that as a success. The city needs being the connectivity and these other issues. And are the community needs going in defined, or those still have to be discovered? Well, some are, no, those are, I mean, there were assumptions about those at the beginning, but I, I don't like the idea of relying on those assumptions. The first, as I mentioned, the, the first step in that will be defined by, by the enumeration. It's not a completely open-ended process, so the enumeration will define certain aspects, like, well, we will then, from that, extrapolate how many unit, housing units of how many square meters do we think we need, um, how many additional ones could we potentially put in, and what kind of cost would that then feed into the expense profit? Would that feed into the project or set and blah blah blah? Then put that back into the discussion, and saying, "Well, here is our picture. Here is the enumeration result. Here is our picture of what the enumeration result translates into in terms of what we should be aiming for, and then can we get buy into that as a set of objectives, and then." Because at the same time, we will also be bringing in the city objectives of the public space, the connectivity issues. So you can then start putting that together as a package and saying, is that something that everybody can agree to? And then from there, we can start agreeing on specific urban design options and that kind of thing. Okay. It's not a straightforward framework. I agree with you in that if you've got one clear goal, that's a hell of a lot easier. But 
and this is one of the things that always comes back to me of, with this nature of project of I mean, something I mentioned in the earlier comment, that, that there obviously is going to be a limit to the range of situations where you can do something like this. How, how weak a scenario can you make this working? And for us, working out roughly where that line might be drawn. So one of the things I'm also hoping we can get out of, out of the learning on this is what kind of criteria should you have for, what, for an area to be eligible for this kind of project, or where should you just go for, for another option that's easier? Because this is at the complex end of things. So it was or it wasn't, and there's useful learning from that, but at least yeah. you're clear about the contextual assumptions that you think make it an appropriate tool and the objective you're trying to get to. Yeah, and I agree with you that, I mean, we have we have bits and pieces on paper on that and things like that, but a lot of them are based on a lot of assumptions, a lot of them are a bit vague, and I, if, I, if I'm getting it right, I agree with you that I think it would be a useful exercise to tighten that up significantly. Some of the reason we perhaps haven't is that, that we've only been active in this site for maybe six months, and we should have done that tightening up process as soon as we had the site identified, but we've had this, because of a whole series of external factors, we are running to catch up with the time schedule that the, the city has. And that, meant, that has meant that we've cut some corners on things that we probably shouldn't. And we certainly, within the longer term, what we would recommend to people would say, don't do that. Because also we're able to pull in, you know, we can pull in this kind of discussion and everything else into the process and use that as part of the learning. Mm. The guys we are recommending this to in the longer term won't have the ability to do all of that. So, I mean, there are a lot of things around that we have to be careful of. Yeah, I agree. Um, what, in what, well, um, with communities, like especially in Medellin, that have suffered a lot of issues, like violence, corruption, and all the issues that we know about uh, managing um, in the past. Um, trust is not easy at all. And also it's not easy to, to create a link between the community and the local authorities. Uh, so my question uh, in that sense will be, how are you dealing with this in how do you do in, to create, in order to create this uh, link be, between the community and the authority? Is the authority, the planning department, who is um, playing the role, or is Unavitat who is playing that facilitator um, role? <laughs> okay, the, the, well, the second question first, and then I'm, and I'm going to cheat and bounce the first one over to Oyana because she knows much better than I do. Um, on the second question, that, that issue of the trust, yeah, Medellin has a lot of specific problems, but that basic issue of the break in trust is very common. I, you sit in a lot of developing country cities and it, the, the causes of it can be varied, but the basic disconnect, I mean, where I live in Nairobi, it, the idea that you say to anybody, trust the city council, <laughs> what? I mean, it, it's just not something people would conceive of. I think we believe here that we have the, the most important element that the city authorities, at least to a good degree, do want to rebuild that relationship, which I think is a fundamental part of the equation. If they weren't interested and they didn't care, then why bother? Yeah, they've got different motivations in wanting to do it. Some of it is PR and the image of Medellin and these kinds of things, but I think some of it is actually substantially more deeply rooted in that. I think they do want to change the situation and, and open up. The, we do have an issue around who is perceived by the community as the key actor. And we are very aware that to a certain degree the city is keen to use us and our brand as a way of, of 
changing the reality of the situation. For us, our counterparties, it isn't planning it, it's the social housing agency, as you met, who still have a, a mixed, mixed relationship at times. Um, but we want them to be the key image and actor, because they are the decision maker in this. Yeah, they pull in the other agencies, but they're the champion agency for this project. But when you look at what's on the ground, there's a definite keenness within ISVMED, I think for practical reasons, to blur the lines between their identity and ours. And I believe, I mean, I stand to be corrected by Oyana, but I think you can see from the reactions that are coming from the ground that there's a very good reason for that, because people see the UN label and that, that helps. But then, while that causes some problems for, for, and risks for me as an institutional level, if it helps get the first bridge, and I can use that as a way to get the community to trust these women more, and then slowly bring them together, you know, it's like marriage guidance counseling or something, you know. You can have the counselor in the middle to begin with to get the two people talking, and then you can leave them on their own later on then okay, we'll try and build that bridge role, and then once they've done it there and they've shown that community they can do it, then the other communities will trust them more and then, then we become irrelevant to the equation. I mean, for us, certainly, the ultimate aim is to become irrelevant, because we're, we're not going to be around doing this forever. But, um, yeah, I, and then I don't know, on the, the first question, the degree to which we are engaging the community in their needs and expectations, I mean, that discussion is on the table, right? But Adding to what Robert uh, has said, in the, in the meetings we have already had with the community, we have heard that, okay, now the uh, uh, United Nations is in the project, so this time it's going to be executed the project. So we are going to be the houses in, in the United States. So for them, the guarantee that the project is going to be developed is not is meant, is that you and I, that is the project. So for us, it's a, a big... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say a challenge. Don't, don't tell that to the legal counsel back at headquarters. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm kidding different activities that are supposed to be consecutive, but we started with all at the same time. So even if we don't have still the, the enumeration and the characterization of finishing, we started with the, with the planning proposals. I mean, working at the office, not with the community, working at the office, and also in the, with, the, with the financial model related with that planning proposal, uh, with the things that we already know as, as techniques about the neighborhood, about the city needs, and at the same time, we are working with the community. We have um, uh, established uh, some, um, a representative, representative committee, with the main leaders of the neighborhood and also uh, what we call thematic committees with the, with the rentals, with the business in the area, with the young people and also like, it's not a committee because they are really, uh, they are free, just few of them, with the owners of this laboratory, basic laboratory because we know that it's a problem in the neighborhood, with the business that clean the the buses, we also meet them. And we have established this committee that are going to suppose uh, where we are going to uh, take the decision after and where we are going to uh, contact them. So, so it's the, the tables or the committees that we are going to use to take the decision later. No? But by now we are developing uh, workshops to define uh, what we call the logic, logic framework. So we are working on the problematics that the community identify of the area. And to later, just after this recording, we are going to work in the, in the object, uh, objective tree, coming from the, from the problematics they have identified. And then we will work on the on the planning um, participatory proposal design. So 